evidence of this dis disability when we examine patients, but we cannot see evidence of the damage on brain scans. And so this is a normal brain scan, and these white areas are areas that have been damaged by attacks of the immune system. And so we put together a protocol that uh, the scheme is like this. Here we have our patient with multiple sclerosis, and the, his immune system is attacking his brain. We would collect stem cells from his blood using that drug, Nupagen or GCSF, to mobilize the blood cell, the, the bone marrow stem cells from the bone marrow into the bloodstream. And we collect it, and I'll show you a picture of the machine in a minute. But what we collect is a mixture of, of um, blood cells, and only 1% of this uh, product is actually stem cells. And so we have to put it through another uh, machine called a stem cell selector, and we get pure stem cells. We freeze those away, and then we give the patient high doses of chemotherapy and antibodies to destroy their immune system. This causes some collateral damage, and so we have to nurse the patient back through that. And as well, after we've given the chemotherapy, we put back the purified stem cells and we watch them grow into a new immune system. And the thought is that by getting rid of the old diseased immune system, a new one would grow back without making the same mistakes and it would become tolerant of the patient and provide protective immunity. And so we harness a lot of technology to do this. This is the machine we do the stem cell collection um, with. And so the patient uh, gets connected. One ar ar a needle goes into one arm and blood is brought through this machine. There's a series of pumps and clamps here and a centrifuge down here that spins the blood and layers out the white cells and the red cells and the plasma, the liquid part of blood. And we put a little nozzle in the white cells to divert them and collect them up here and then the rest of the blood goes back into the patient's arm and we wash about uh, 20 liters of blood through this which is equivalent to four times the amount of blood that we would have in, in a, our body at any one time and so we, we keep washing the blood through this machine until we collect enough stem cells. We then purify it on this, this machine which is called a stem cell selector and what happens is, is we take the cells, we mix it with antibodies that recognize the stem cells, and these antibodies have little iron filings on them. And so only the stem cells have an iron filing attached. And we take this whole mixture and we pass it through a column here that has steel wool in it and put this in a magnetic field. So all the cells with an iron particle attached to it get stuck in the column and the ones we don't wash or don't want wash through and we wash away all the cells we don't want and then we release the magnetic field and collect the purified stem cells and this can this procedure can can purify stem cells to 99.999% so better than ivory soap kind of kind of thing As we've been going through through our trial, we've been watching to see what happens to the patients. And one of the things that we've been very interested in is, is watching how what happens to their disabilities. And we have a variety of ways of measuring it. The complicated way is a scale that my neurology colleagues, um, specialists in, in diseases of the nervous system, have device and it's a scale from 0 to 10 and briefly 0 is perfectly normal 3 on this scale you would have a significant impediment to to your lifestyle you would know that something was wrong at 6 you would be using aids to get around because you wouldn't be able to walk properly so you might need a cane and at seven, you would probably be using a walker or a wheelchair. And by eight, you would be bedridden. And so we can kind of evaluate people that way. Or an easier, easier way of, of evaluating it is figuring out how long it takes people to walk 25 feet across a flat surface. And so 25 feet is probably from here to the table. 
And most of us could do that in, in what, a, a second or maybe two seconds if we were really dawdling. Patients have a lot of trouble with this and, and sometimes they need a cane. And this particular patient took seven seconds before their transplant to walk from that 25 feet. But over time, as they've recovered from their transplant and as their brain has healed, they've taken less and less time and, and now can do it in five seconds. But rather than using a cane, they can do that independently. So balance is better and coordinating all the muscles is better. And so it's this kind of evidence that we're collecting that helps us understand that, that this transplant procedure works to help the brain repair itself by shutting off the damage. And so, so this is kind of where we're at right now. I want to end with kind of with science fiction dreams that that I would envision are going to be able to be be uh, um, done by medical practice ten years from now. And I have to say, if you had told me ten years ago what I would be doing in my medical practice and the kind of things that I would be able to help patients with right now, I would have said it was science fiction. And so even though this sounds very outlandish to say that this might happen 10 years from now, I think um, there's a, a good chance through the research that's going on through the stem cell network and th through other colleagues that this is, this is feasible. So, so patient arrives in a wheelchair. Uh, my poor intern says, Dr. Atkins, the brain growth factor didn't help this poor person. Maybe the damage is too severe. And I can look very wise because I'll be old by then. Uh, trying to stimulate neuron growth didn't work, so let's suppress his immune system with anti-immune donor lymphocytes and we'll implant a nervous system scaffold and use donor stem cells to repopulate the brain damage. It may take a month or three, but chances are he will get better. And that's our goal, is to harness all these new technologies.